Hi, this is Mark Bonman. This is the example series of videos that we'll be putting out there to cover various examples. In this session, we're going to cover microservices. There's two different patterns here that we're going to be covering. One is a standalone microservice, which is often used as just an API or integration with other applications that need to just make a simple call. And then the second one is probably much more popular, which is a decomposed monolith application. And that typically happens when a large application needs to be broken into smaller pieces for supporting uh, different teams, team of teams, if you will, that work on those different pieces, uh, front end, back end, or in most cases, you have different components of the larger application that are used in order to uh, create the whole. So the first example we're going to go through is pattern number one, which is a standalone shared API. And in this case, we're going to start with the notion of having a product model that is a tax calculation. This is very common in large organizations. You have a tax calculation service that gets called by other applications that need to calculate taxes for various purposes, for sales or service delivery, or different systems that are set up for those different activities, depending on where you are. The business application is tax calculation, and the product model could be a third-party application, and that's often updated on a periodic basis, like once a quarter or something like that, whenever tax laws change and the tax calculations have to reflect that. Here we have the application service, which represents the production environment. Uh, in this case, it's the 2021 prod environment. And we also deal with the uh, application table here. This is the running software. This is not the business application, um, which accounts for all instances. And we'll get into that in a minute. And then at the very bottom is the infrastructure that the application is running on. So this is the single product model that represents all of the different instances of that product model because you may have to deploy this particular tax calculation software in multiple places and different models at any given time. In this scenario, we're actually showing how you can create a technical service offering, which is the tax calculation for Americas, for example, and uh, different product models might be used for different particular jurisdictions or countries, things like that. In this case, we're looking at one specific for the Americas. This is the offering associated to this package, if you will. Uh, the next layer up here on the technical service is the tech calculation API. This allows us to manage that service as a whole in the various offerings as you add different offerings to cover, let's say, different jurisdictions, different regions as you expand globally, that sort of thing. It may require different packages or the same package might need to be upgraded, you know, pay more money for those different tax calculations. But you're able to control, you know, the different software used, the different deployments of that software as it's, as it's running in production and how that is exposed to various users and onboarding those users as they need to access the calculation process. At the very top, you have you can think about the business capability as an overall finance capability. So the finance organization ultimately drives and owns this particular investment in tax calculation software. And here, what we're identifying is that we have other application services that depend on this particular tax calculation. So we have a phone ordering system example, we have a order management system, and then here we have services that calls that particular tax calculation as well for calculating tax on services rendered. So this is a typical scenario, multiple applications, depending on the tax calculation, depending on what it is your architecture is and requires, and that can grow and expand. And basically you still have to maintain that tax calculation for as long as you need it. So here we're showing that the request catalog provides an access to calculating that tax. And what we're able to do is pose that as a process so you can onboard new applications if you need to offer that to other applications that need to then call into that API. So you can direct them to the right instance if it's an America's situation or maybe there's a different offering that you need to direct them to based on, let's say, South America, if there's different tax calculations or a different package of software that's used for South America. And then as you continue to expand this out, this is just wanted to show you how you can have different pre-prod environments where the new version, and this is the case where we have a test environment that is related to the next quarter version of that particular software. So as the software is updated, you wanna be testing to make sure it works still in the non-prod environments. And then when that gets ready, you basically redeploy that particular application into prod and you update that particular application service with the 
latest version. So this is a, a typical standalone microservices. It, it, it basically doesn't have a lot much of, from an EUI perspective. It's there just purely for calculation purposes and then it's highly shared. In the next example, we're gonna get into a decomposed monolith. So the pattern is very similar, but what we're gonna look at is three different product models. So you have tax calculation, you have currency conversion, and uh, the, the main software package is customer one, which has these various packages that is part of it. And here, what we see is a online sales management application. But in this scenario, this is a decomposed monolith, which means that the application services that are part of it are all owned and governed as a whole. They're not shared independently to other applications that might be calling into it. So things are managed, governed, and, and also financed, in this case, in one business application tier. Now, as that application is deployed and the microservices are created as children. So these are direct references to the children application services that make it up. And just like uh, in a scenario where th where any of these particular application services could go down operationally, it affects the ability for the whole to work. And so this is primarily done to facilitate the teams, different teams managing these particular packages independently, but also you can change just the tax calculation and, and you don't have to touch at all the currency conversion or the main code over here. But uh, this allows you to kind of interchange these parts and the, and the software behind them uh, more readily without having to go through a lot of hoops in coordination because one team is coordinating everything, but you still have different teams that take care of the different parts of that application. And the, the next part as we kind of flesh this out is that these all might be leveraging a shared technical service for managing the host environment. So here we're seeing a scenario where two different packages, two different applications are actually deployed and running on one shared infrastructure. And then we may have another application product that uh, product model that's over here, that's the main product model that is actually on another piece of infrastructure. So you could scale these pieces independently depending on the, the volume, the requirements from a server perspective. Uh, so these could be scale out or one may not be scale out. So there's all kinds of ways you can architect these microservices based on the requirements for the underlying code. Likewise, these might be deployed in a cloud environment. That's That works fine. You just wouldn't have the infrastructure visible underneath, but it would be virtual, purely virtual, where this code would be running. So just wanted to kind of run through this example here, just the three different microservices that make up the full application service here, which represents the whole. All of these are part of the online ordering offering, and that could be part of the online sales. So you might have a offline ordering system here that could be part of it as well. Uh, so that, that offering dynamic, we, we'll get into in a, another example. And then all that is part of your sales portfolio of business services. All of that would be part of your sales capabilities. So the capabilities that you need for sales, this is where you do would fund all of that. And then of course, as folks need to access or use these systems, they would go through the service catalog and access the business service from a human or interaction point of view. And I did want to, I did want to take you through what this looks like right here from a child application service point of view. So what we're gonna do is I've created a, a microservices app. This is my application uh, that I just created. My app, my microservices app it is N tier, which means that it's made up of multiple microservices. There's a couple number of tiers there. And you can see here, you can uh, they have the different microservices that are established as part of those application tier, service tiers. And if I open that up in the dependency view, the, you'll see that I've actually chosen tag based for all this. So this is an, an example where you have maybe the application, it's deployed in the cloud. You're using tags to be able to identify those piece parts. Uh, this is the whole, this is the whole microservice, which it represents the production environment. Uh, this is microservices app prod. And then you can see the two different microservices here. This is a, a tag based application services, which is for the currency conversion. And then this one over here is for tax calculation. So this represents uh, that scenario that we're just talking about. The, these sets up the tier. So any of these application services goes down, the whole goes down and you got traceability back to the business app. Uh, these uh, of course would be uh, have underlying 
resources associated with them as the information comes in through a discovery source. All the tag-based resources that come in from your cloud provider would be associated to the respective microservice. Thank you very much for listening to this example model session, this one on standalone microservices, as well as decomposed monoliths. We'll continue to put new videos out about once per week. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and provide some comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube playlist and watch for additional videos. We'll be putting a new video out about once every week or so. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.